Thank you all for joining us today for our Lipid Maps webinar presented today by Professor Bill Griffiths from Swansea University in the UK. My name is Valerie O'Donnell and I'm introducing Bill from Cardiff. Before we start, I'd like to pay a tribute to a much loved colleague and friend who I know many of you will know, our co-PI on Lipid Maps, Michael Wakelham from Cambridge. We were devastated to hear of Michael's passing from suspected COVID last month. His absence is something that's going to take us a long, long time to get used to. Michael was in fact due to host our next webinar in June, so out of respect for him and his colleagues, we're going to take a break after today and we'll come back with our new series in September. So today, as usual, ask us a question using the Q&A button. The webinar is being recorded for our YouTube channel. Um, Bill will present for about 45 minutes and then we'll have 10 minutes after for questions and we'll take as many as we can depending on time. The webinar today is sponsored by Avanti Polar Lipids, Incorporated Manufacturer of Highest Purity Products for the Research Chemist and CGMP Lipids for Pharmaceutical Production. These include phospholipids, sphingolipids, sterols, neutrolipids, bile acids, fluorescent and deuterated lipids. Avanti have been one of our key partners and collaborators for many years and we're extremely grateful to Walt, Rowena, Casey and the rest of their team for their ongoing support. So I'm delighted to introduce you today, Professor Bill Griffiths. Bill is Chair in Mass Spectrometry at Swansea University Medical School, in fact just an hour down the road from, from me in Cardiff. Uh, he sits on the Lipid Maps Nomenclature Group. He plays a central role in supporting our continued development of nomenclature and classification, particularly focusing on the specialist area of sterols, bile acids and related lipids. He's also a founding member of the Lipidomic Standards Initiative and the European Network for Oxysterol Research. Bill's research spans the area of sterolomics. He pioneered the development of state-of-the-art new methods for mass spectrometry analysis of literally hundreds of sterols, including oxysterols and bile acids. Bill's work has been seminal in allowing researchers around the world to analyze these challenging but highly important lipids that are now becoming appreciated also for their emerging roles in immune and brain regulation. Bill's made many important discoveries relating to nuclear receptor activation in the CNS and the involvement of oxysterols in the immune system. Over 250 publications and almost 7,000 citations, and he's edited two books published by the Royal Society of Chemistry. And Bill sits on the editorial board of Journal of Lipid Research and Clinical Mass Spectrometry. So today, uh, I'm delighted to introduce Professor Bill Griffiths. I'm very much looking forward to his webinar, which is entitled Sterols, From Cholesterol to Bile Acids, Biochemistry and Analysis. Over to you, Bill. Okay, um, thank you very much, Valerie. Um, yeah, so today I'm going to talk through the pathway from cholesterol to bile acids. Um, we'll look at the biochemistry of the pathway and we'll look at the analy analysis of the intermediates in the pathway. Um, just a disclosure slide. So I'm, I'm listed as, as an inventor on the patent kitten method of the quantitative detection of steroids and I'm a shareholder in um, Colisthenics Limited. Okay, so I'm speaking to you from, uh, from home today as uh, the university is, is essentially closed. Um, but if I, if I was in the university and I was to just walk outside the university and look to my right, this would be the, uh, this would be the scene I would see. So uh, this is a picture of, um, of Swansea Bay on a, on a nice sunny day. Um, needless to say, it's not a nice sunny day today. Okay, so here's an uh, outline of, um, of today's talk. Um, we have a few introductory slides. Then we'll talk about a little bit about the biochemistry of sterols and their metabolism. Then we'll move on to their analysis, first by GCMS and then by LCMS. And finally, we'll look at an applications of, of mass spec analysis of, of sterols in, um, in biology. Okay. So let's start. Let's start with um, cholesterol and its, and its metabolites. So this is cholesterol, and we have the, the four ring structure, and we have a side chain with eight carbons. So um, in total, there are, there are 27 carbons in, in the cholesterol molecule. And this really provides the template on which all other mammalian sterols, sterols are built. So cholesterol is metabolized to 
hormonal sterols, sorry, hormonal steroids, which we won't discuss today, and it's metabolized to bile acids. And that's what we're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about the pathway from cholesterol to, to bile acids. So at the top right hand, right hand side here, I've got a Newman projection of, um, of cholesterol. And you can see it's a rather flat molecule. It's got a hydroxyl group at position three, and it, here is the side chain and the eight carbon side chain. So this molecule is converted to bile acids. Now, number of, quite, a lot, quite a number of reactions that um, we do that, that, that are involved in this pathway. And let's look at the difference in the structures. So while cholesterol was flat, bile acids have got a kink in them. This is because the double bond in the, in the B ring of cholesterol becomes reduced and a hydrogen is introduced at the um, five, five beta position. This introduces the kink in the molecule, so bile acids are, are, are bent while cholesterol is flat. Also in bile acids, there's a change in the um, stereochemistry of the hydroxyl group at position three. A hydroxyl group is usually introduced at position um, seven as well, and also, also other positions. There's also been a, a um, shortening of the side chain, cholesterol had eight carbons, while bile acids have five carbons. And of course, there's an introduction of a carboxylic acid at the, uh, at the terminus of the bile acid. This is why, why, why they're called acids. So this is the pathway we're going to explore today. Um, before we do that, I'd just like to uh, give you a couple of key resources that, that uh, I use all the time. Um, and we're, and we're useful in the preparation of, of today's, uh, today's webinar. Um, uh, some very nice um, tutorial um, lectures really, given by Prof, Prof Dennis um, from UC San Diego. And these are found on the, on the Lipid Maps website. And there are two, um, two lectures there on, on, on cholesterol, which are, which are really, really very good and really very useful. Another re resource which um, you can find on the Lipid Maps website, this is the pathways of cholesterol biosynthesis. And I, I'm forever looking at these pathways, so this is a really, really useful resource. And finally, there's a um, very nice YouTube video given by Mike Brown and Joe, Joe Goldstein from, from Southwestern, where they describe their work on sterile biochemistry. And this is a, this is a, a very good watch. Then I have a couple of um, key references, um, which, uh, which really, really cover sterile metabolism. So there's a reflection article written by David Russell from um, UT Southwestern. And in, in this reflection article, he describes his, his um, work on the identification of the different genes involved in the bile acid biosynthesis pathway. The two other reflection articles written by um, Swedish scientists, which are also very, very nice reads. There's this one by Ingmar Björkem from, from Stockholm, and this one by Jan Schirval from also from Stockholm. And they describe their, their careers working with, working with um, cholesterol metabolism and identifying cholesterol metabolites. And finally, I, I recommend to you um, this, this review, again written by, by David Russell, where he covers all the enzymes and the genes involved in the, um, on the, in the bile acid biosynthesis pathway. Okay, that's the introduction. Now let's um, move into a little bit of biochemistry. So um, this is a, a, a slide that's been shown before a couple of times in these webinars. And it shows the different um, classes of, of mammalian lipids. So they can all be formed starting with acetyl-CoA. And most of the lipid classes then go via, go, go through fatty acids. Sterols and prenols are, ex are exceptions. In, in they go, they're synthesized by isopentyl pyrophosphate. And they're synthesized via carbocation condensations. 
and sterols themselves can be esterified with, with fatty acids also. So I think this is a, a particularly important slide as it reminds us how all the different classes of lipids are in fact interrelated. And this really highlights the importance that we really do need to do lipidomics and study all the classes of lipids because they are all, they are all interrelated. Okay, well, cholesterol is the archety archetypal, uh, archetypal sterol. However, it's, it's got a, a bad press, shall we say. Well, the reason it's got a bad press is that high levels of cholesterol in, in the serum, um, levels above two milligrams per mil, um, are associated with increased death rate due to, card, 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 due to cardiovascular disease. So as your levels of cholesterol in, uh, in blood get above two, two milligrams per mil, then so does the death rate. So this is why cholesterol is, is, has got a bad, a bad press to the general public. However, we know that it's a, it's a good molecule. So it's, bios, it's, it's biosynthesized by all cells in vertebrates. It's a major component of cell membranes. It's a precursor of steroid hormones. It's a precursor of bile acids. It's a signaling molecule itself and metabolites of cholesterol in the bile acid biosynthesis pathway act as signaling molecules. And I think this is what I find most interesting is that the in, uh, intermediary, intermediary metabolites are actually sing, signaling molecules. So if we look at cholesterol metabolism, now the first step of all cholesterol metabolism is a formation of an oxysterol. Now, oxysterols are oxidized forms of cholesterol. Basically, they're cholesterol molecules with added oxygen functionality. So here are some of the um, simple oxysterols which are formed enzymatically. So here we've got 27 hydroxycholesterol with hydroxyl group introduced to the terminus of the molecule, of the cholesterol molecule. This is um, mostly formed in the lung. Here we've got 25 hydroxycholesterol. This molecule is mostly formed by act activated um, immune cells, such as mac macrophages. 24 hydroxycholesterol, this one is formed in the brain. 22 hydroxycholesterol, this is formed in the placenta and also the adrenal gland. And then we've got 7-alpha hydroxycholesterol. This is formed in the liver. Now, each one of these oxysterols can be oxidized at least two times, at least two times more. So the result is a huge range of possible oxysterols in, 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 a, um, in a biological system. And many of these oxysterols, if not all of them, have got um, signaling properties. So some of the signaling properties of oxysterols, so they are ligands to nuclear receptors. So for example, the liver X receptor, LXR, and to ROR, alpha and gamma. They're ligands to G protein coupled receptors, such as EBI2, which is important in the immune system. They're ligands to smoothened, which is important in hedgehog signaling. So this is a key um, signaling pathway during, during development. They're also modulators of the NMDA receptors. These are ion channels in, in, in nerve cells. And they're also ligands to INSIG and involved in the fine tuning of, of, of cholesterol biosynthesis, the regulation of cholesterol biosynthesis. So, these cholesterol metabolites, they're important molecules. So let's now move on and discuss the analysis of these molecules. Well, in the earlier webinar given by um, Prof Murphy, he described how um, sterile esters can be analyzed by mass spec. And that's something that we won't discuss here. 
In this webinar, we'll concentrate on the mass spec analysis of oxysterols and sterile acids. We'll leave the analysis of bile acids to a, to a later date. So today we're going to concentrate on the on the analysis, mass spec analysis of these of these oxysterols and, and sterile acids. Well, um, oxysterol analysis, really the classical methods for oxysterol analysis are based on, on GCMS. And probably the gold standard method is this one in this paper by Susanna Zletovic working in the, in the group of Orphix Felusi and Ingmar Björkem in Stockholm. So this paper published in 1995 is really a, a classical paper in that most of the GC methods that are used today for the analysis of oxysteryl are based on this classic method. So in the next slide, let's have a closer look at this classical method. So the method is applicable for tissue and for um, biofluids, but it, 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 it was actually initially developed for the analysis of, of serum and plasma. So serum and plasma is generated in the presence of EDTA. So EDTA um, is important to chelate, um, chelate iron. By chelating iron, you um, prevent the possibility of fenton oxidation. So you limit the poss possibility of artifactual oxidation. You also, they've also had BHT, which is an antioxidant, which again limits the, the possibility of artifactual oxidation of cholesterol. And they add, then add internal standards, and they then perform a hydrolysis step. The hydrolysis step is used because many oxysterols are esterified with fatty acids. So the hy hydrolysis step will cleave the ester bond. There's then extraction into chloroform. The chloroform fraction is then dried down and redissolved in toluene. Then there's a normal phase SPE step. This normal phase SPE step is, is rather important because this step will separate cholesterol from oxysterols. So this is very important because cholesterol is a thousand times more abundant than any oxysterol and cholesterol will become oxidized by, by, by air to generate oxysterol artifacts. So it's really important that we, we remove this, this cholesterol before we analyze our oxysterols. So oxysterols are, are eluted from the normal phase column. They then derivatize to TMS ethers and analyzed by, by GCMS. So the derivatization reaction, um, the derivatization reaction is performed in pyridine, hexamethyl disilazine, tri trimethyl chlorosilane. So we introduce these um, TMS ethers to the molecule. This is increases its stability and also increases its volatility. So it's suitable for GCMS. This derivatization method will also work for cholesterol and cholesterol precursors. So after you've analyzed your oxysterols, you may want to go back and analyze the cholesterol fraction, and you can do that using the same derivatization method. So this classical method um, from, from, from Zletovic has, has now been updated a little bit, and I would recommend this paper by Schott and Lutjohn um, for, a, for an updated version of, 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 the, of the classical method. I'll just show you a little bit of data from the classic paper of 1995. Here they're able to separate different oxysterol isomers, and they've got particularly nice separation of 24 hydroxy cholesterol. Hydroxy, 24 hydroxy cholesterol has got a hydroxy group here, 25 hydroxy cholesterol, and 27 hydroxy cholesterol. So um, this is nice separation, even in 1995. So as time has passed, there's really been an inexorable movement 
from GCMS towards LCMS. An oxysteer analysis can, can, be put, can be performed very nicely via, via LCMS. And perhaps the most comprehensive method for oxysteroid analysis for LCMS um, comes from this work described in the paper, this, 90, this 2012 paper by Jeff McDonald working with David Russell. Um, they 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 they've developed this method, which we'll go through in the go through in the next slide, and they've used this method in a number of very large studies and have done very comprehensive um, oxysteroid analysis. So the method is developed for um, serum or, or, or plasma, and the first step is generation of the serum or plasma in the EDTA vacuum container. Then internal standard is added and BHT. And there's then a single phase extraction into organic solvents and then addition of potassium hydroxide to do the hydrolysis. And they then perform liquid liquid extraction and then a normal phase SPE as in Bjurkem's, as in um, Zletovic's method. The SPE separates cholesterol from the oxysteroids and they then analyze their oxysteroids via LCMS. So um, Jeff McDonald, who's, who worked out this method, um, he mostly uses um, triple quadrupoles or triple quadrupole like instruments for his oxysteroid analysis. And to get good sensitivity, he um, exploits MRM, multiple reaction monitoring. So here's a uh, chromatogram. From, from Jeff's paper. Again, he has nice separation of the different isomeric oxysterols. He has nice separation of 24 hydroxycholesterol from 25 and, and 27. Um, if we think a little bit about the fragment, fragmentation of oxysterols in MSMS, well, the major fragmentation that you see when you fragment an oxysterol is the loss of water. So you can lose one or, or two water molecules. So this is good if you want high sensitivity MRMs, but it's not so good if you want, if you want to gain structural information. So um, it's good for MRM, but not so great for, structure, for structural information. Um, other people have used derivatization methods to improve the sensitivity of oxysterol analysis. Oxysterols, they don't give huge signals in, um, in, in, in LCMS, and this is really why um, people use MRMs to, to, to enhance the sensitivity. Another way to enhance the sensitivity, as I've said, is to, is, is to derivatize. So there are a number of, number of derivatization methods. I've just picked here, three, three, three here. So first one is derivatization of, of oxysterols to picolinyl esters. So this is developed by um, Honda in Japan. So once you made the picolinyl esters, um, they readily get, pick up sodium ions in the electrospray source and improve the ionization of the oxysterols. Another um, derivatization method is to derivatized to give dimethylglycine esters. So this was worked out by Jiang. Um, again, in the electrospray source, the dimethylglycine esters readily become protonated, enhancing the sensitivity. And thirdly, we've got a derivatization to nicotinyl esters um, developed by Sidhu. Again, in the electrospray source, these readily become protonated and give us, gives us good signals. Um, a disadvantage, of course, of derivatization is that it involves ex extra labor, so there is, there is extra work and extra time. Um, another disadvantage of these three derivatives is that they are um, specific, or they are attack, they're derivatizing the hydroxyl groups. And there are hydroxyl groups in many different lipid, lip, lipid molecules. So the derivatization is, 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 is rather non-specific. 
nevertheless, they are they're still excellent derivatization methods. So um, we have a, have a somewhat different derivatization method, and we like to derivatize with the Girard hydrazine reagent. So our derivatization method, it's a two-step derivatization method. So most oxysterols have got this three beta hydroxyl group, which is which is comes from, which is present in the cholesterol molecule as well. And in the first step, we convert the three beta hydroxy group using cholesterol oxidase enzyme, bacterial cholesterol oxidase enzyme that you can buy commercially. We convert that to a to a three ketone group or or a three oxo group. Once we've got the three oxo group, that will react with Girard hydrazine reagent, so this is a hydrazine group, this will readily, readily react with the three oxo group and tag the, the Girard hydrazine molecule, the hydrazine group, onto the, onto, onto the oxysterol molecule. So we effectively tag a positive charge onto the oxysterol molecule. This greatly improves sensitivity and it also adds specificity because the enzyme is specific for, uh, for three beta hydroxyl groups. So the derivatization will, will, will be specific for molecules with a three beta hydroxyl group or natural molecules that have got a, that have got a ketone group. The, the idea of Girard using Girard hydrazine reagents and sterols is not new. In fact, uh, Girard did this in, in 1936. So uh, we, we are we're reinventing the wheel a little bit here. So let me just give you a show you a little um, cartoon of the of our derivatization um, method, which we call enzyme assisted derivatization of sterile analysis or EDSA. So here's our oxysterol. It gives quite a quite a weak signal in electrospray. So first step, cholesterol oxidase converts that. 3 beta hydroxy group to a 3 ketone. Along comes our Girard reagent. We use the Girard P reagent. This will react with the ketone group, form a hydrosome, and we've tagged the positive charge onto the molecule, and we improve signal by a factor of 100 to 1,000, depending on your electrospray source. We've been using, you've been using this method for, for quite some, some time and it's uh, it is very simple and it is very robust. There is however a, a complication here in that most oxysterols exist in two forms. They exist in a form where we have a three beta hydroxyl group and they can also exist in a form where we have a naturally a three oxo group and of course in our protocol, we convert the three, three beta hydroxy, three beta hydroxy group into the into a three oxo group. So we actually, in our protocol, we actually measure the two forms together. Um, this, this, this problem can be overcome quite easily um, in our in our sample prep, which I will explain in the in the next slide. So here's our sample prep, which is works equally well for, for tissue or, bi or, or biofluids. I'll talk you through the method um, with plasma. So again, we collect, we generate our plasma with EDTA vacuum containers. We then do an extra extraction, a one-phase extraction into ethanol. This precipitates out uh, precipitate out the protein. We then dilute the ethanol to 70% ethanol. We then put that onto a straight, uh, sorry, onto a, onto a reversed phase SPE. Oxysterols will pass through the, the SPE um, in the 70% ethanol, while cholesterol will stick to the SPE. In this way, we're able to elute the oxysterols while the cholesterol will stick to the column and we can get rid of it. We then take our oxysterols and we split them into two fractions, an A fraction and a B fraction. 
with the A fraction, we treat, we treat the A fraction with cholesterol oxidase enzyme. That'll convert the three beta hydroxy group to a three oxo group. We then react with the Girard hydrazine reagent. We then do another SPE to get rid of um, XX, excess Girard reagent. And then we analyze by LCMS. So this A fraction, this will contain oxysterols that initially had a three beta hydroxy group, and it will also contain oxysterols which naturally have that three oxo group. Okay, we then move on and take our B fraction. Now with the B fraction, we emit the cholesterol oxidase. So we emit the cholesterol oxidase step and go straight to the Girard reagent. Do our derivatization, then another, SP, another SPE to remove excess reagent, and then we do a second LCMS. Now the second LCMS will only have derivatized molecules which naturally contain the three oxo group because we didn't include that cholesterol oxidase. So fraction A will have data for three beta hydroxy and three oxo oxysterols, while fraction B will be data for only three oxo oxysterols. So if you take A minus B, you get data for the three beta hydroxy oxysterols. If you just look at the B fraction, you get data for the three oxo oxo oxysterols. So in the old days, for each sample, we used to run two LCMS um, injections. Now we've simplified things a little bit by using isotope labeled Girard reagents. So for the A fraction, we use a pentadeuterated Girard reagent, while for the B fraction, we use the light, um, the light Girard reagent. So we can then, we do our derivatization, fraction A with the deuterated Girard, fraction B with the non-deuterated Girard. We can then combine the two fractions and analyze them together in the one LC experiment. So a mole molecules in fraction A will be separated from molecules in fraction B because those in fraction A will have the deuterated Girard on, so they'll be five mass units heavier than those in fraction B. So we can analyze fraction A and fraction B in the one LCMS experiment and get all our data for the three oxo compounds and also the three beta hydroxy compounds. <clears throat> I should say now that it's, it's relatively simple for a, uh, for a chemist to make the deuterated Girard reagent. However, you can buy it from, from of antipolar lipids. And in fact, Cayman Chemical will sell you a, a, a whole kit um, to do the, the whole thing here, which also includes isotope labeled standards. So you can go to Avanti or you can go to Cayman, or if you're a chemist, you can, you can, you can do it yourself. Okay. Um, we've actually made um, many different isotope labeled versions of the Girard reagent. Here I, I so sit, show you six different isotope, ver, isotope labeled versions of the Girard reagent. So if you so wished, you could actually combine six different fractions or, or, or six di different samples and analyze them in, in the one LCMS method. However, um, in reality, it's quite difficult to make, to synthesize the more exotic um, isotope labeled Girard reagents. And we only ever use a duplex using the, the light Girard reagent and the, and, and the D5. Okay, let's now, um, I see time's flying. So let's now look at some, um, some data, some biological analysis. So most of our work is done using the um, Orbitrap instruments, um, first with the um, Orbitrap, Orbitrap Elite, and now um, with the Orbitrap uh, IDX. So with our derivatization method and LCMS, just like everybody else, we get very nice separation of the, of the different oxysterols 
you know, we get almost baseline separation of the of the um, 24, 25, and 20, 27 isomers. Um, because we've got the added sensitivity due to the um, derivatization, we're also able to observe some of the more um, exotic oxysterols and the low abundance ones. So here we've got 7 alpha 25 dihydroxy cholesterol and 7 alpha 27 di dihydroxy cholesterol. So these, as it were, double oxysterols. Um, for all our quantitative work now, um, we use the oxysterol splash reagent um, from Avanti, which is a mixture of, of different isotope labeled internal standards, um, which, have, which have been um, carefully, carefully prepared and are of high isotopic uh, um, purity. So we use, we use the oxysterol splash for our, for our quantitative work. Okay. When we fragment our derivatized oxysterols in a uh, triple quadrupole or, um, or uh, in a triple quadrupole like fragmentation anyway, um, the major fragmentation that we observe is the loss of the, of the pyridine ring. So here's the parent, the major fragment ion is, is one form due to the loss of the pyridine ring. So this is, is good if you want to do MRMs because you've got one major fragment ion. Um, but it's not so good in the, in, there's not a lot of structural information in the, in the MSM, MSMS spectrum. If you look carefully, there is structural information, but the st structurally informative peaks are, are rather weak. However, as we work with iron trap instruments, what we can do is we can select our major fragment iron and fragment it again in a MS to the three experiment then we get very nice fragmentation patterns. So here I show you um, four MS to the three spectra of different um, oxysterol isomers. So if we look at the um, first spectrum on the top left, in the low mass region, we see fragment ions which are due to cleavage in the, in, in the, ring, in the ring system. In the middle mass region, we see fragment ions which is formed by cleavage of the side chain and the top, uh, the top, top region, we see neutral losses. So let's now look at the spectra of these different isomers. So this one is 24 hydroxy cholesterol and it's got a characteristic peak at 353. Whenever you see a reasonably large peak at 353, you know you've got 24 hydroxy cholesterol. If we move then on to 25 hydroxy cholesterol, here we move the, 20, the hydroxy group to position 25, because the hydroxy group here is now on a tertiary carbon, that means it's, it's rather labile. And the major fragmentation we see is loss of the water, is loss of a water molecule, and essentially hardly anything else. Uh, anything else. So the spectrum of 25 hydroxy cholesterol it's very different from that of 24 hydroxy cholesterol. If we then move on to 27 hydroxy cholesterol, now we've got the hydroxyl group on a, on a primary carbon. That means it's rather stable. So in this case, loss of water gives a much, much smaller peak and all the other peaks come up. All the other peaks come up. So the spectrum of 27 hydroxy cholesterol is different from that of, of 25 and 24. If we then move on and put a hydroxyl group, group on the ring system, that will now change the pattern of fragment, fragment ions in the low mass region. So different positions of hydroxyl group, different MS3 fragmentation patterns. And what is nice is that we can act, actually explain how these different fragment, fragment, fragment ions are formed. So here's some mechanisms which um, Bob Murphy worked out. And you can find in, in, in his uh, book from um, 2015. So he explains how the low mass fragment ions are formed in, ter in terms of mechanism. We can also explain how the side chain fragment ions are formed also in terms of mechanism. And the, the, high the, um, the side chain fragment ions, these are, are formed via charge remote fragmentations. Now, the nice thing is but if we understand how fragment ions, if we understand the chemistry of how fragment ions are formed, that means if we get an uh, unexpected 
ms 3 spectrum, we've got an unexpected oxysterol present in, the, in our sample. By looking at the ms 3 spectra, we can piece together the structure of that molecule and, and identify it, and then, and then ask Avanti to um, synthesize it for us to check that our identification is correct. Okay, now in the, in the last five or five or ten minutes, let me tell you about what we're, what we're really interested in at the moment. We're interested in, in, in localizing um, oxysterols and sterols in, in tissue samples using on-tissue derivatization, LISA and LCMS. So LISA stands for Liquid Extraction for Surface Analysis. And this can be done using the Triversa Nanomate robot from, from, from Advion. So I've got a little um, cartoon showing what we, what we like to do here. So um, this is a sagittal section of, of mouse brain. And what we do, we use the LISA robot to sample a small region of the, of the, of the mouse brain. We then perform L, L, sorry, before I said that, I should remind you that we, first we do, do on tissue derivatization on the, on the mouse brain using our, using our Girard reagent. We then use our LISA and do our, do our sampling. We then run a mass spectrum and we get quantitative information. So blue means low abundance. We then move to another spot, again, mass spectra get some quantitative information, and we can actually go around the whole of the, of the mouse brain, getting quantification for different oxysterols across the, across the mouse brain. So this, this actually, this is a, I guess, color, um, intensity is color, is, is on, on a color scale from blue to red, and this, um, picture is actually for 24S hydroxycholesterol, which is most abundant in the, uh, in the striatum and thalamus, and it's least abundant in the, um, in, the, in, 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 the, in the, in the cerebellum. So let me explain a little bit more how, how, uh, how, uh, how uh, we do this derivatization and Lisa. Okay. So we take our, our brain slice. We then spray isotope label standard onto that, onto that slice. Then we spray on cholesterol oxidase. The cholesterol oxidase will convert that 3-hydroxy group to a 3-ketone. We then spray on Girard reagent. That will add the, hydrazine, the Girard hydrazine group onto the 3-ketone group. So we've will increase the sensitivity of our analysis on tissue. So we do our analysis with the Orbitrap. So we remove the electrospray source and we put in its place the, the Advion, Advion robot. So here is a uh, mouse brain sagittal section on a, on, on a microscope slide. So let's show you a little bit how the how the Lisa um, Lisa works. So if I click here, the Lisa robot comes along, picks up extraction solvent. It goes to the mouse brain, and we have extraction from a small region of the brain. The robot will then dispense the solvent into this 384 well, pla well plate. We do um, du double extractions on every spot to, um, to get, get as much really of oxysterol off it as we can. <clears throat> we then, from the, uh, from the Adv Advion, we go to LCMS. So this is really just like our plasma, plasma analysis now, in that we separate out the uh, different oxysterols on the LC column and we can quantitate them because we've added that in internal standard. So here's just some um, data for two oxysterols. This is 24-hydroxycholesterol. Again, most abundant in the striatum and thalamus, least abundant in the cerebellum. 
and this is a 24S25 epoxy cholesterol, so it's, a, it's an epoxide. Um, again, this is most abundant in the, um, in the thalamus. And what is nice is that our data for um, the oxysteroid quantification matches the uh, expression of the enzyme that actually makes this particular oxysteroid. Okay, we can also use an exactly the same method. If we're interested in cholesterol, we can analyze cholesterol. Or if we're interested in cholesterol precursors, we can, we can analyze the cholesterol precursors and get quantitative information from, from them also. So I'm coming to the end now. So hopefully in this uh, webinar, I've shown you that um, oxysteroids are interesting interesting molecules. They're ligands to lots of different receptors. I hopefully showed you um, about their classical GCMS analysis, also LCMS analysis, and I've also, also, also talked to you about um, our method for their analysis. Then I've showed you how we can use um, LISA to generate a picture of oxysteroid abundance on brain slices. We can also use MOLDI and actually do um, MOLDI imaging, again using our, um, our derivatization method and get high resolution MOLDI imaging. But the, but the high resolution MOLDI imaging really only works well for cholesterol because it's so much more abundant than the oxysteroids. Um, if anyone is interested, particularly interested in, in oxysteroids, um, you're very welcome to join the European Network for Oxysterol Research, or ENOR, and if you click this link, you, you can find out more about, about ENOR and how, and how to join the um, network. Finally, I've got a slide for um, showing, showing you our, our group from uh, different years. Um, this is the group from a, a few years ago. Um, this, is the, this is the current group. Um, this is uh, Professor Yu Ting Wong, um, the I guess the co-PI on all the projects, the projects that we run. Finally, I should thank our funders. So most of the funding that we get comes from BBSRC, and we have had a, a, a little bit of funding also from the from the EU. So that's about it. So um, thank you very much for um, listening and I will be happy uh, to take questions. Okay, thanks very much. Thank you, Bill, that was great. And the, uh, the mass spectrometry is just so impressive um, from your group. I'm blown away with that every, every time we see that. So thank you very much. So I'm gonna call out a couple of questions now. And the first one is from Ali Hajea, who's actually from my group in Cardiff. Ali's a first year PhD student with me. And I know he's been in touch with you to discuss about sterile esters recently. And he's put a, a question on today um, where he's asking, uh, do you think alkaline hydrolysis or derivatization might prevent characterization of oxidized cholesterol ester species that could you know, contain fatty acids? They could be cholesterol esters where you've got oxidation or, or not oxidation, I guess, on both the cholesterol and the fatty acid. Yeah, so I, I, it... think, uh, yeah, I think there's definitely value in, in um, looking at intact oxysterol esters or in intact, intact sterol esters. Um, I guess the problem is going to be is that they're going to be um, rather minor. So they're, they're going to be of, of, of low ab abundance compared to um, cholesterol esters. So I guess the, the, um, the skill here will be in, in the chromatographic separation of um, the oxysterol esters from, from, from cholesterol esters. But I, I do agree that that is an important thing to do. Um, a, a disadvantage of, of doing um, base hydrolysis is that uh, a, number of, a number of groups in the oxysterol molecule are, are labile. So for example, if you've got a 7-alpha hydroxy 3-oxo-4-ene, um, then the 7-alpha hydroxy group is labile and that, and that will be lost during, during alka alkali hydrolysis. So, um, in our, uh, uh, in our, most of our work, we do not do alkaline hydrolysis. And that means that um, where 
looking at a lower level of oxysterols than, than other people who do al alkaline hy hydrolysis. Um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I, I, so I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing with you that it's a good idea to, to look at the collect, collect, um, so, so, so I guess at this point, we don't know whether oxysterols attached to icosanoids, for example, we just don't know whether they exist because they haven't been yeah. looked for because of the challenge yeah, I, in analyzing I, them. I, I think that would be great to do, but I think the, yeah. the, the challenge will be the low, the low abundance. Yeah, 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 sure. I guess we face this with it with any um, icosanoid uh, lipids attached to high, yeah. you know, larger functional groups. And uh, yes. we've managed to do this with phospholipids and, and, so, and with cholesterol esters. But it, yeah, as you say, the oxysterols are going to be so much lower abundance, it will be I harder. Guess, but yeah, yeah, we always like a challenge, Bill. It's not I, a reason I to not do it. We will be looking at the right system. <laughs> Yeah, so absolutely. Look, look, yeah. You know, so maybe if you look at activated macrophages, where 25 hydroxy cholesterol is hugely upregulated, then that that's where I would. If, if you're going to see anywhere, if you're going to see um, oxysterol esters anywhere, that that might be where it is. Yeah, sure. Okay, so um, an anonymous question questioner is asking if you've got any idea of the efficiency of your Girard derivatization reaction, which well, I'm so sure you would have an answer to that. We're pretty we're pretty sure that it's it's um, pretty close to to one hundred percent. You know the, the chemistry here is is, is very well. Uh, you know the, the Girard reagent was first developed in nineteen thirty five, I think. So the chemistry is very is very sound here. So um, both the enzymatic step um, works very efficiently because cholesterol oxidase that's uh, that's the same enzyme that's used when you do um, um, blood tests for for levels of cholesterol. And the Girard reagent reaction is also very, 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 very mature. So, so our, our method is simple and, it, and it's ba based on very mature reactions. Yeah, so um, a lot of us work on lipids which are generated in response to challenge. So, you know, you take a neutrophil and you switch it on with a bacterial product and it makes five heat or a leukotriene, for example. Do you find similar um, pathways for synthesis of oxysterols you know are these p450s regulated in response to receptor dependent activation so in so, the, in immune regulation for example so in terms in terms of immunity so then um, it's it's really oxysterols derived from from um, 25 hydroxy cholesterol so um, bacterial or virus infection will increase the expression of CH25H, that's cholesterol 25 hydroxylase. And that will, that will convert cholesterol to 25 hydroxy cholesterol. So um, if, you, if you have a bacterial infection, then your levels of 25 hydroxy cholesterol in the bloodstream go, go, go up. Um, and this is the same, this is also true with, with, with virus infection. And then this 25 hydroxy cholesterol it can be modified and converted to 7-alpha 25-hydroxy cholesterol. And that then is a ligand to the G-protein coupled receptor EBI2, which is involved in um, the trafficking of immune system, oh, sorry, of, 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 um, of immune cells. So it's really the, the 25-hydroxy the 25 cholesterol and its downstream metabolites, which, which are um, important in the immune system. Okay. Um, Steve Barnes is asking, have you ever looked, I know this sounds like an interesting question, have you ever looked at the manatee for its sterols? It doesn't make bile acids, so the sterile metabolism should be backed wow. up. Okay. Yeah, I know. Be, yeah, cool. oh, yeah, we haven't, but that should really be interesting. Thanks, Steve. I, I, that's <laughs> really interesting. That's, that would be a, a really interesting project. Um, can you use DESI as well for your imaging analysis? Yes. So, um, talk a little you, bit about that. You, you can. So we've done, um, we've done this with Waters um, up in Manchester. We did it last, uh, last summer. And again, you know, if you do your own tissue derivatization, the DESI works, works, works beautifully as well. So um, the DESI imaging of, um, of cholesterol is, 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 is beautiful. Um, the problem with the um, for the oxysterols and the DESI is that they're so so um, so much lower less abundance than the than the cholesterol, so it's difficult to actually see them against the background. But in theory, um, DESI should work 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 well for imaging oxysterols as well. 
Okay, um, we've had a comment from Ed, who is saying regarding, the, this is Ed Dennis from UCSD, regarding the discussion on base hydrolysis preceding detection, this wouldn't work when oxygenated icosanoids are the ester, as they too would be destroyed by base. And Ed's asking, how sensitive can you get without base hydrolysis, Bill? Oh, uh, I, I, I won't put a number on it, but very sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Panir Salvam is asking, can you do analysis by direct infusion instead of LC separation? I'm guessing tricky, if not, no, uh, you, but you can, that you take you can, that. But you lose all, you, you lose all, you, you can, but then, then, then you lose your is, is, isomeric separation. So, you know, we, we are wedded to LCMS really. Okay. Uh, so a question about how oxysterols were all discovered, and uh, obviously it's a huge challenge to discover and structurally characterize lipids, especially when they're in low abundance and there's so many related structures, I guess, in biological samples. So we'd really like you to talk us through a little bit about how these were discovered, how they were structurally characterized, the challenges involved. Was it all done using right. GCMS and NMR? Right. Were standards made for them? This is a big historical question, right? Right, right. So this was... This, this sort of field started with Sunna Baystrom, who won the Nobel Prize for his work on, on ecosanoids, actually, um, with Bengt Samuelsson. So Sunna Baystrom had two interests. One was, um, one was prostaglandins and ecosanoids, and the other was oxidized um, cholesterol. So um, Baystrom, um, working in Karolinska Institute, they had one of the... Um, early early GCMS instruments and Baystrom and, and I think it was oh I can't remember the chap's name now um Rehaga but um, bank, um so so th these two um analyzed um, oxidized oxidized cholesterol products using use, using using GCMS and, and they were the some of the first um people to uh, to analyze, to analyze and, and really discover oxysterols. And as you say, then, um, then um, oxysterols were um, standards were synthesized, and GC retention times and 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 spectra were were compared. Um, also, there's NMR of of um, oxysterols, but I guess the problem with the NMR of the oxysterols is that you need for NMR, you need quite a lot, and in biological systems, you're there. There are they need always minor, um, need always minor species. So I, I guess nearly all of the um, biological identifications are actually being done by um, by GCMS. Mm, for those yeah. who, are, who are interested in, in the history of oxysteroids, there's a marvelous um, review by George Schroefer probably published around um around 2000 um, and so anyone who wants to know more about oxysteroids look for this review by george schroffer it's something like 200 pages um but it, it's got everything that was known at the time about oxysteroids yeah maybe we should put a link to that beside your webinar on okay. youtube afterwards so people can easily find it that would be very useful um, so, I mean, but continuing that school of thought a little bit, now that we've got, you know, these high resolution scanning approaches, would you think there are other oxysterols out there that haven't been characterized yet, or have they pretty much all been discovered by now? No, no, there, there, there will be a, a huge number because, you know, almost every carbon on that cholesterol molecule can be oxidized and you can have one oxid oxidation on the left one oxidation on yeah, the right yeah um, I, I think the um the possibilities are almost you know they're almost infinite um oh. but but you know people you know I, I like doing this sort of thing but people will criticize me for for just stamp collecting so but but maybe that maybe some of the stamps are are, are worth are, are valuable in the future well, they absolutely are. It's not stamp collecting. It's 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 building the foundations for future research, such as, such as the discoveries around the role of these lipids in immunity, which is turning out to be a really important area. 
So Petros is asking about lipid identification. Do you do this manually uh, with MS to the N, or do you do use any commercial software like oh, Lipid Search or anything else? No, we we have uh, well we we have a I guess a, a library of 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 all the oxystyles we've ever we've ever identified. So this is uh, you know twenty five twenty years twenty twenty years years work. So we've got uh, just a, a library of of all their MS to the three spectra. Um, so it's actually it's it's the eye is better than the computer. So yeah, we I would agree. Do it manually, but it's, it's, yeah. it's very easy to do it by by eye. Yeah, and uh, I guess one last question before we finish: Are there any specific oxysterols implicated in gut health? Oh, that's a good question, and it's it's not it's not an answer I have at the top of my at the tip of my tongue. But that is a good question, and I should know, but I don't know. Ah, okay. Okay, well, I think that that's been great. We got through lots of questions, Bill, really good, and uh, learned an awful lot, as particularly about the analysis of these fascinating molecules. So thank you very much for your presentation today, and uh, we'll see everybody in September. Goodbye.